sure to check out banggood.com for your RC needs. This is where this kit came from, as well as you can get parts for it. Alright, you two. Part three on the TFL Bronco build. I'm not going to stop this one until I have a roller. That is my goal. Um, I had to skip a few steps. We skipped over to step 11 because it's talking about bodywork and it's cold, damp, and dreary outside. So painting is out of the question. I painted the inside of the body a uh, Rust-Oleum black just to, you know, inside the panels and everything. And, uh, you know, it don't matter how it looks in there, but it's too moist out there to paint the outside of the body. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. I've looked through all of the instructions here. And it shouldn't be a problem to get to this step. And I could throw some tires on it and we can call it a roller and have something real to look at. Because to me, it's not a real car until it's rolling around. It doesn't have to be driving yet, it just needs to be rolling. If you look at my driveway, I've got two that barely drive. and <laughs> They roll really well though, so that's what we're about. Um, so this next step... I'm skipping the floor pan and the dash firewall installation. And uh, from what I can tell from taking it apart, because it does come with the body all assembled, bolts are loose, um, it shouldn't be a problem to put those in after this fact. So, it, nothing I'm putting in will be in the way of adding those back in later. Um, we're going to do the servo and motor. So we've got our built transmission and motor. Here I have a Savox SA1231SG. Pretty high torque servo, has a metal horn on it already. Don't even remember what that came out of. So I'm going to use that for this build. We've got the TFL transfer case, which is fan freaking tastic. This thing feels like butter, looks awesome. It's low profile, mounts to their custom cross member, which is in bag H. So this first step is bag E, which we already had open anyway, because of the transmission build. That includes the blocks and a handful of bolts and washers and things over here, nuts. So move bag H out. And uh, yeah. Alright guys, so I had one little oopsie so far. The leftovers from bag E, it calls for four 10 mils and four 16. So I've got four 16, four washers, four nuts. And I have three tens and an eight. <laughs> not not a, not the end of the world. It's the servo bolts. So, oh well. We'll see if the eight will work. If not, I'll try to find something ten to use. But, you know, things like that happen. It, so far, that's the biggest issue I've run into. Then this is a fantastic kit. So, uh, let's get back to uh, high speed. I just want to take a minute to talk about fit and fitment. This is this right here is excellent. That is, it was a little snug getting the engine and transmission in with the spacers, but being a tube frame, top and bottom, with the flat plates on the side, it flexed a little bit enough to uh, get everything in. There wasn't too much bolt sticking through. Even the one bolt for the servo that was a little bit short, still plenty long enough to go all the way through the lock nut and not release. Um, the way it's laid out, the engine is offset to the left. The engine cover sets dead center. 
looks cool. I wish the hood opened on this so you could see it. Uh, we could throw a little Ram Air thing and a radiator up here and it'd be fantastic. But uh, I'm not going to cut into the fiberglass body. That's, yeah, yeah, not about that. So, uh, transmission and engine are in. Servo's in. Everything just fits perfect. Um, it has a plate here for a winch. I'm not sure what winch will fit. I have a three racing winch that I want to say might fit. <clears throat> I'm afraid most of these type things are designed for the Intigy style winch. Now those holes look like they would work. Just have to mount the fair lead on the outside. And wonder if we have the same problem that we had with the RC four wheel drive bumper and winch. Where the fair lead, yeah, that fair lead doesn't even come off. So, But it looks like the bolt pattern here will fit the bolts in the bottom of the winch. So uh, that might be an option. <clears throat> Let me uh, do some exploring here and take this thing apart. Alright, moving on. I've got the chassis out of the way. Next is step 12. It says chassis frame assembly. We've got our aluminum cross member. Really nice and solid. It's like a well-built piece. Um, I was told most of these components will interchange with an SEX-10. Um, I don't know about the transmission and the engine mount and all that because there's no place to bolt those two in the way that they bolt but it could be done and this this cross member just screams axial <laughs> so uh, yeah it looks like a lot of this stuff is interchangeable so this step we are opening up the drive shafts this is the drive shaft for the transfer case transmission mount not sure why it's so different it's a uh, a pretty piece and the lower drive shafts are pretty much uh, function over form. They look like MIP shafts. They're nice and solid and uh, they have good joints on them. Nice and uh, flexible and they're heavy. They're nice and heavy and solid. Look really good. So this step is putting that transfer case on the, the skid plate and mounting the drive shafts to it. And the next step after that is going to be putting it on the transmission. So, we've got those are the same length, which is kind of weird since uh, most of the stuff I've done RC four wheel drive related is all short in the front, long in the back. But uh, let me get the hardware bin open. I don't think I used that one yet. That's all pretty much the accessory trailer hitch and uh, little tiny red D-rings which look pretty scale. <laughs> so let's get started. So this is the part that uh, somebody warned me about on uh, face, or on YouTube, sorry. Uh, bolting the transfer case to the skid, it calls for two eight M3x8 uh, flush bolts and two M3x12s. And all that these bags have in them are some little m 3 by like six flat or the, the flush mounts so I don't have what I need so I gotta find I've got my other bin here keeping things organized all my button or my flat head screws are up this way now these are probably RC four wheel drive screws but luckily the uh, you know they're pretty standard so I gotta see if I have the right length that one's too long that one, same as that. These are the same, but are they? They should work. So we got two and two. Let's go ahead and do this before I warp to high speed time here. Uh, so that's, you know, I, I've run across that with everything. I've had RC four drive kits come with the uh, wrong hardware before. It's just something you run across, but luckily I have enough. Uh, Surplus in stock. I need a Loctite. I forgot about Loctite again. <laughs> it's funny, I only forget about it when I have the camera going. Alright, there's some Loctite on there. I use very little Loctite when I do this stuff. I don't know, I, I had an RC4Drive Trailfinder 2 RTR one time, 
And I swear they used super glue on some of that stuff. It was it was pretty wild. <laughs> that was the one I built the blazer out of. And it was uh, very hard to get apart. So I, I'm always cautious with the Loctite because I like to take my rigs apart. I might tear this apart and throw a different body on it one day or a different engine in it or something. You never know. Oh, messed up. Loosen that one up a little bit. So I don't ever like to overdo the Loctite. Less is more. As long as there's some on it, it probably won't come out. There we go. I mean, as little as I drive anyway, it probably won't come out. So, I'm hoping though, I, uh, you know, it's been warm this summer, so I'm, I've been doing yard work. So, uh, get my uh, crawler course cleared out. Maybe I can uh, add some new stuff to it. Uh, that doesn't feel right. That one feels like it's trying to cross thread. Let me loosen the other ones up again. It's a dangerous game playing with threaded holes and threaded parts. My puddle of uh, Loctite down here is almost dried up. There we go. Okay. I just had the other ones too tight. It was off just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. We'll get all this stuff buttoned up, get the drive shafts on here in high speed so you don't have to be bored to death. plate in partially now we're moving on to the axles everything's going smoothly except the uh, Loctite <laughs> fighting with this damn tube of Loctite all night it's leaky and every time I squeeze it it runs out of the uh, down on my hand as opposed to out of the tip I cut it kind of small but not too small I mean I can see the opening but whatever all right so um, drive shafts are in. They're a little dry. I always hate that. They, uh, they grease these with like graphite or something. So, uh, I'm gonna wipe them off here on my scrap t shirt. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this, uh, lithium grease. I typically use this in axles, but I've used it on these type of drive shafts before. If I can get any to come out. Do it around the uh, end. Probably regret this because during the process of putting the axles in, I'm gonna end up with it all over my hands, but it's the nature of the beast. I get in there, try to smooth it out a little bit there. They move freely, but they're just kind of kind of rough. They feel coarse inside. But they are solid. They are very sturdy, so. Hopefully it doesn't become an issue. Get this back one done. So uh, step 14 is the front ax axle installation. Um, looks pretty straightforward. Got four links and a shock mount. I don't think this addresses the steering just... No, it does actually. So I hope I've got all the uh, correct hardware. Uh, this stuff put up. Alright. Get the drive shaft in. 
Now I did go ahead and attach the uh, transfer case to transmission mount. It's going on like so. Now the transmission or the transfer case skid plate where the transmission would be on an SCX-10 mounts through the frame, the cross member, and then the axle. Very similar to an SCX-10. You can't lie about that. Um, let me see where all these spacers are because it's showing showing some spacers for the upper shock mounts which I have not found yet which I think we're in here with the trailer hitch I see some spacers in there so let me get everything sorted out and then we'll bump to high speed <laughs> all together um, ran out of the right size bolts there at the end it uh, got kind of vague between uh, the front and rear axle and then setting those bolts aside I it had a whole bunch of extra bolts which appear to be body bolts which the body already had in it so I don't know I ended up with one about 16 millimeter bolt and I needed two 20s but uh Otherwise, I just put some scale hardware from Locked Up RC. It's a little long, but it works. And, uh, yeah. I'm ready to throw some tires and wheels on this thing and call it a night. So, let's do that real quick. Alright guys, there it is. I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'm getting pretty tired. I did go ahead and install the uh, three racing winch up here. It bolted right in. I used some Tamiya bolts in the bottom. Shocks feel a little stiff. I've got fluid in them, but uh, I don't know. Made us, the backs feel fine. May just be the fronts because there's not enough uh, weight on there yet with the body, or just more weight with the motor and stuff. I don't know. Got to adjust the steering uh, steering link. It is a little bit one-sided. Don't get much this way, but. It was wild the other way. But overall, I'm still impressed. I like this thing. I mean, look at this chassis. It's it's pretty damn cool, man. And the transfer case sits flush below the uh, floorboard, so you can do anything on the interior. It's got that giant console in the middle, but it doesn't need it at all. <coughs> it's pretty neat. I uh, think really all that's left we need to mount the. We need, I gotta find an ESC. I gotta mount a receiver, ESC, battery, and paint and body. And then this bad boy will be ready to roll. The tires don't stick out too far. 
Got a reasonable amount of flex. I think it's going to go well with the body. Like I said, I'm not going to do anything to adjust it or modify it until I've driven it. So uh, we'll see how it does box stock versus playing with the springs versus playing with tires, etc., etc. Let me grab the body real quick. I did paint the inside, like I said. Um, I painted it black, but I want to see what it looks like on here. Just you got to at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end the video here. It's looking pretty cool. I'm I'm excited about this. Um, it's coming together pretty easily. A few little wrong bolts here and there, but nothing nothing serious. I like it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching and sticking through the uh, long musical segments here. But you can see what I'm doing. You can see uh, what's going on. So that's what it's all about. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next installment.